Hi, hello everyone. So we are gonna get started in a few minutes. So please make sure your sound is working properly and you can see your screen. We're gonna just give it a couple more minutes to, to get us started. Just wait one more minute and then we can get started. Nice. Well, people is getting connected. So now we have 44 participants. So a uh, few more seconds and we can start roughly for 3 p.m. Netherlands time. Well, let's get started now um, and people are going to come and still joining. So, well, thank you very much for joining this morning and this afternoon. We are getting started now and our webinar's topic today is reopen stores safely with store occupancy. So we hope you're really going to enjoy this and learn through the journey and the story that we got to tell you here. So uh, once again, welcome and we hope you like it. Okay, so first we're going to start with a, with a disclaimer. Um, and the disclaimer is just regarding all the information provided during this webinar on the occupancy solution is for information purposes only. And no rights can be derived hereof, and NADA refers to a disclaimer applicable on the webinar. So this is something our legal department just suggested us to add. So let's go ahead and present our panelists for today. And we are very, very excited to be presenting this webinar together with Frank Reitzma on behalf of Bigathon. So Frank, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, hello everyone. As, uh, I think you should be able to see me now. So um, good afternoon to all, thanks for having me. So I'm uh, Frank, uh, my last name is uh, Reitzma, which is uh, very often difficult to pronounce. Um, so if you can just call me Frank, that's good as well. And I uh, work for the Decathlon in the Netherlands. I have been with the company for six years now, and I work as the safety expert or safety reverend uh, for the country. So of course, uh, today's subject is something uh, that uh, we work with already in the Netherlands, and it's great to share our experiences with you today. So thanks for having me, uh, Daniel. Thanks, Frank, and forgive me for my mispronunciation of your last name. I'm trying my, my best with, with Dutch. <laughs> uh, so thanks for joining us. And we also have Vera Hoodman. So Vera, can you please give us a brief introduction of who you are? 
Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Um, hi, I'm Vera Hutman. I'm from uh, Need of Retail, where I'm the user experience designer in the R&D team. Um, I'm one of the people that help develop store occupancy, uh, and today I'm here to give you all a, a little bit of insight about functionality and how to implement it in the store. Great, Peter. Thank you very much. Well, thank you both once again. And before we get started, uh, we just want to ask Frank to quickly or briefly introduce Bigathlon for, for the people who has no idea who's this massive uh, company in the world. So, Frank, just give us a little bit of a brief introduction of your company. Yeah, will do. So, um, most people will probably know us. Um, we are a, a rather large sports retailer, as you see. Um, we have the mission to make sports as accessible as possible to the many in every country where we are active. So um, the numbers you see here are from uh, January 2020. We are now active in uh, uh, 57 countries, so approaching 60. And we have uh, over 1,600 stores worldwide with uh, well, over 90,000 employees. Um, of course, uh, it's worth noting that the Netherlands only is a very small part of this. Um, we have 21 stores uh, in the Netherlands uh, with around uh, 1,500 employees, but the Netherlands is also a very small country, so we, uh, we have a, a good coverage in the country, so it's quite well. I think that's a brief introduction of, uh, of our company. Yeah, that, that, that's a good one, Frank. Very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, well, before we get started, we have a few house rules, uh, just to let you know. So. This webinar will last something around from 30 to 40 minutes. We do have a Q&A section at the end of the webinar. So please drop your questions in the Q&A bucket on the Zoom screen that you can find uh, in the middle of your bottom screen. Uh, we will be doing four polls during the webinar. So whenever you see the pop-up on your screen, just choose the best answer. And we do please ask only retailers to answer these polls. Uh, we will be recording this webinar as well, so if you want to share with, with colleagues, it will be up on our website and we will post it on our social media as well. And please, well, please do like and share this webinar to spread its reach and yeah, people can get, can get the knowledge of what's happening in retail. Uh, well, before we get started with the real content of the webinar, <coughs> uh, we're gonna share with you the, uh, the topics that we wanna talk about either with Fera or with Frank from, from Decathlon. So what are we gonna talk, talk about today? We are all living a very difficult time in retail due to COVID-19, and we have to be very creative and reliable in regards to social distancing and occupancy restrictions, always taking care of the safety aspect. So we're gonna talk about this. Uh, we're gonna let you know how does our store occupancy solution work? We're gonna give you inputs and insights on how to deploy it in your stores. And we're gonna discuss some real life results with, with Frank. And of course, as we talked before, we are gonna have some Q&A section at the end. So now, uh, before, before getting started with the real content, we wanna have the first poll. Uh, so the question is, how are you managing occupancy levels in your stores? And the answers are baskets, shopping carts equal to visitor limit. Maybe you have a host at the door ma manually counting, or you have a dedicated occupancy system, or you are not managing occupancy levels right now at all. So let's just give a few more seconds. Waiting a few more people to answer. Okay, just wait 10 more seconds. Okay, so let's end the poll now. And well, these are the results. So a little bit as expected, a lot of the retailers are hosting with somebody at the door manually counting, which implies in a lot of, a lot of costs, of course, operational costs. And this is something that, that we, with our solution, of course, we can help you leverage and, and solve this problem or this situation right now. Uh, well, thank you very much for answering the poll and let's go for the next, uh, let's continue. 
So uh, getting now in the content of the webinar, what is happening with social distancing and occupancy restrictions in retail? Well, what we've noticed is that retail is increasingly enforcing social distancing regulations by limiting the number of people and or guests at the store at the same time. So as of April, 89% of the shoppers had concerns about shopping in physical stores according to well, a survey by Payment Service Pass. Uh, the most important objective and what we are all aiming for is to protect public health. Uh, getting a grip on global safety by setting a, a maximum occupancy based on the legislation, of course, uh, for every single country. And our store occupancy solution ensures that visitors and employees have the space that they need to be safe and health. So, these are the topics that we are considering from a, from a restrictions and social dis distancing point of view. Okay, so now I'm gonna give the word to Fera and she's gonna take us through a more technical guidance or more technical explanation of how does our solution work and how can you have it implemented in your stores. So please Fera. Thank you, Daniel. So, uh, as we just saw in the first poll, a lot of the uh, current solutions to dealing with uh, occupancy in the store require actually quite a bit of effort and manual labor within the store and uh, extra hours from employees. So what we want to do with store occupancy is to provide a more lightweight uh, approach to um, maintaining occupancy levels within the store. So, how can we do this? Um, we uh, employ a software service which leverages the custom accounting data that is already available from the custom accounters in our EES gates. Uh, we combine it with the possibility to setting a maximum occupancy, which provides uh, a simple and easy to use interface that shows both uh, the current amount of people in the store, as well as the places that are still, still available. Um, the solution can be employed uh, across a wide range of devices and can be used by both your store employees, but also by your visitors. So how does it work? Uh, say a customer enters your store through one of the entrances. It doesn't really matter how many entrances you have in the store uh, because the occupancy is displayed on a store level. So say one of the customers enters, um, the, then the direction is uh, determined, so we know whether it's a plus one, plus one or a minus one. And because our systems are connected to the internet, this information can be sent to our analytics platform. Here, the uh, current occupancy is calculated and then displayed on the occupancy monitor, which is then synchronized across devices. Uh, because we also know the uh, maximum occupancy, we can calculate whether how close you are to capacity. So if you are at 90% capacity, you get a visual signage that is, uh, that's not many visitors are allowed in. And if you are surpassed, then you get a red screen. So let's check out how that actually works in real life. So we have a video here of occupancy in action at the Cathlon. Uh, and in this case, you will see that the visitor limit is set at 88 people. Um, in the background, you see people moving in and out of the store, multiple at the same time. Every one of these is counted separately, and we can see slowly the occupancy level rising. Um, you also see the screen turning red as soon as your store is full, and this would be the point where you would start um, uh, building up a queue and not letting people into the store anymore. So this is a really simple way to show uh, if you are still adhering social distancing legislation and the maximum occupancy requirements. So that's in short how it works. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the practical side of things. How can you implement it in a store? Uh, first of all, of course, you need the hardware. So you need uh, our EAS gates. Um, so the, the video that you just saw, for results like this, you need the iSense gates with the latest firmware. It's also possible to use ID tops with integrated overhead brick screen readers, but in this case, there will be a one minute delay. Um, one more thing that you also need, of course, is a device to display the monitor on. And this can really be almost anything that has access uh, to the internet. So what we understand in this, in this current times, it's difficult to make investments in the hardware. So what is also possible is to use, for example, handhelds that are already being used for stock taking or displays that are being used for advertisements in order to not have to make investments. 
furthermore, because stores are chaotic places, there are also some things in the, in the store that, that you can do to make sure it works well. Uh, I will not dive too deep into this because this is something that we will cover in our conversation with the Catalan. But what I want, do want to touch upon is that it's possible to manually adjust the current occupancy levels using the plus and minus buttons on the screen. This information is also locked and together with the current occupancy reset to zero at midnight. So you never get an off offset building over uh, multiple days. The last thing you need is access uh, to uh, retail analytics. So um, each store needs an account. We can also help you with this by providing a unique URL per store container credentials so that each store can log in safely and easily. So lastly, uh, I just talked a little bit about our analytics platform, which is where we, uh, where we make our customer accounting and occupancy information visible. Um, because we think it's important in the current time to help our customers uh, roll out or reopen their stores safely and quickly, we decided to add occupancy to our existing analytics visitor subscription. So if you're already making use of analytics, then occupancy is completely free. One of the other nice things of this is if you decide to newly use occupancy, you get access to all other visitor account information. Um, this is especially helpful as it allows you to view historical data, which can help you find stores that may have surpassed uh, visitor limits, but also to leverage uh, visitor accounting information with regard to finding peak times. So you know when to, uh, to place extra employees or when extra support may be helpful. So rather than having someone at the door at all times, maybe plan it more efficiently. Uh, one more thing that's possible here is setting the visitor limits, which can be done per store um, and can be changed at any time because as we may know, uh, legislation may, may be uh, changed over time. Um, the, the monitor will work without a um, visitor limit set, but we do recommend that you set a limit as it uh, will allow uh, capacity to be calculated. So, uh, now, knowing a little bit more about the possibilities of store occupancy, let us uh, continue to the second poll, which is, what would be your preferred method of maintaining occupancy in the store? So, is this the screen at the entrance for visitors to be able to show a view how many uh, visitors are in the store, or maybe notify all your employees when you're getting close to capacity, or still keep the host at the door but support this person with a little bit more information about what's going on. So I see the first uh, results are already coming in. So let's just wait a bit longer for everybody to vote. So, so far we see a fairly even split to still keeping somebody at the door um, but also uh, having a screen at the door. So it's very, uh, what, what we see here is that it's very important to inform the, uh, the visitor at the entrance of what is going on. And I think that is a really valuable, uh, valuable advantage of having store occupancy is to just provide insight in what is going on rather than having this fuzzy uh, number of not knowing how many people are in the store. So yeah. Most, most people would prefer to still have somebody at the door, but supported with this information. So with this, um, this ends the technical implementation part of our webinar. Uh, I would like to hand the word back to Daniel and Frank to discuss a little bit further about how Decathlon uh, tech yeah. Thanks, Vera. And very interesting, because you said the, the, the magic word, you said for free, right? So. Uh, this is very interesting for our customers, the way they can just implement this at their stores, right? So definitely, uh, very, very, very good usage of the word free. Uh, okay, so now we are going to move ahead with the conversation with Frank. So uh, Frank, once again, thanks for, for joining us. This is going to be very valuable for all the retailers that are listening and that are participating here. And we want to get and move forward for the next question, for that first question to you. So um, we want to know if, well, if you can elaborate a little bit more about what's the, the journey and what are the lessons learned from, from, from Decathlon regarding using our store occupancy solution. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. 
Yes, absolutely, I can. So um, the journey started, I think, around uh, three weeks ago when we started uh, doing tests in uh, different stores. I think the main lesson uh, that we learned is that uh, under the right circumstances, this uh, solution, the store occupancy solution, can bring some peace and support to our teams. Um, the door policy sometimes can be quite challenging for someone uh, from our team standing at the door at all times with the uh, live occupancy visible to customers. It gives everyone um, a little more peace of mind, uh, I guess you could say. Um, and also, especially on the quiet moments, um, it's, it's very, very uh, great to have uh, sometimes periods when you don't need someone at the door because the tool gives us insight and we have calculated maximum amounts of visitors, of course, per store. But what we also see is that a lot of things uh, have changed uh, in retail at this point. But very often, um, the timing when customers decide to come to the stores has not changed always. So we still see that uh, on like a Monday or a Tuesday morning, we never ever reach a customer limit. We now we have the data to back that up, and uh, now with the uh, with the occupancy solution, we sometimes can save some hours and still control the visitors without having someone uh, at the door at this point. So. I think that's the, the main lessons that uh, that we've learned over the past uh, three to four weeks. Yeah, that's very interesting for you to say, uh, Frank, because actually the Netherlands is one of the few countries that never stop or close their, their, their stores, right? So it's pretty interesting the way you are managing and working with, with our solution, to, uh, of course, our other solutions as well. Uh, but if you remember the first poll, the majority said that they are using somebody at the main entrance. So if you, avoid it and you are avoiding it right now then you can focus using your staff employees or your people at the store in other more important um, you know responsibilities or just focusing on the customers right so i think this is very interesting uh, thanks Frank. so we have a second question for you and well it is how are you dealing with if an offset in the visitor count occurs or if are there any operational changes you've made in the store to ensure store occupancy is working optimally? So can you elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because um, of course, if, if you look at um, the offset, it, it's something ideally we would want to prevent, of course, because when we see an offset, then it means that the data at that point is not correct. So what we learned through testing in the three stores where we did uh, the pilot, is that what we very often see that um, customers who visit the store together and in the Netherlands um, uh, it has always been allowed and still is for two people of the same household to um, go outside together and go to a store together um, yeah, without the one and a half meter distance. So basically duos are allowed to walk together uh, everywhere in our country. So what we see is when they come to the store, very often they will enter the store with quite some distance between them and more often uh, exit the store closer together. So we see that, uh, of course, this will only happen maybe once or twice per hour. But if it happens once or twice per hour, then if your store is open for 10 or 12 hours a day, it, it just means an offset growing during the day. Uh, and of course, especially now with the maximum amount that we have, any offset uh, commercially is, is not nice, especially uh, because yeah. it limits the amount of people and you could have ha had more people into the store. So what we learned with the testing is that when we channel the customers to also exit the store one by one, um, the offset is very low. And we've done that now in quite some stores and in one store, the total offset over a weekend going like this was only six which I think is rather low, um, looking at uh, thousands of visitors over the weekend. So it works. If you, if you channel the customers like that, it, it works quite well. Um, and what, what I think is also worth mentioning, mentioning is uh, for quite some stores, um, there will be an offset, for, for instance, because staff will enter the premises uh, through the staff entrance and not through the gates, for instance. Um, or cleaning uh, personnel before the store opens, going in and out and in and out. And that's going to cause uh, some offset as well. 
and uh, like uh, Vera already uh, mentioned, for this, uh, you can use the plus and minus buttons to correct so that you know when uh, you open the gates uh, or open the doors um, that the amount uh, displayed at that point is correct. Because, and uh, of course, a uh, quick mention is that in our calculations in the Netherlands, staff also counts as people in the building you should include in the maximum amount. Uh, maybe that's different per country, I'm not sure, but for us, we also have to count our teammates in the calculation. So uh, if they enter the building through the, the staff entrance, we need to adapt manually. So um, I think if you, yeah, if you take these two lessons, then you can uh, control the offset very well, we learned. Yeah, that's a very interesting of, uh, way of managing your business. Uh, definitely, like policies are going to change from country to country, but I think the way you are uh, managing the business here in the Netherlands is, is quite fair. Uh, we're getting some questions. Uh, well, once again, before moving forward, if you have any questions, please just drop them on the Q&A bucket or, or box over there, and we, we're going to answer them at the end of the, of the webinar. So uh, let's move to the next. Uh, it's the third poll. So the question is, how do you see occupancy technology fitting into the future and what role will it play? The answer is it will be a must have technology or it will be a nice to have technology which will make the process much more efficient or the technology is superfluous and not needed. Or finally, we will not address occupancy in our stores do not have to. So uh, we're gonna wait for your votes. Give it a few, a few more seconds. What do you think is gonna be the the majority of the answers, Frank? Here. Ooh, that's challenging. Um, for the forthcoming uh, months and years, if you look at a. Uh, recent predictions it, it might just be um, a must-have technology for uh, at least for the predictable future but we'll see what everyone thinks yeah makes sense well a bit more seconds and then we, okay so the second option it will be a nice to have technology which will make the process much more efficient 80 percent and there was just one person saying will not address occupants in our stores or do not have to. So pretty interesting. Uh, we have more more questions to you, Frank, to convince. Uh, well, why is this so important into retail nowadays, right? So mm -hmm. let's move forward. Um, and well, one more question for you, Frank. So how is Decathlon planning to roll out store occupancy to the stores? And in terms of time, how much time will this take to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I, of course, um, we are speaking of uh, Decathlon in the Netherlands um, uh, regarding this. But um, after we did the uh, trial in the first three stores, um, all the other stores showed interest. And we started the rollout earlier this week. Um, and it, it is pretty simple. Uh, like Vera already uh, illustrated a little bit, if you have the, the right hardware, the right firmware, and the account is set up, it's, it's a matter of hours and uh, it, it's, it's quite easy to, to get it going. Um, what my advice would be if you roll out, because we are uh, speaking about uh, public health and safety, like you mentioned, is uh, check up front with you guys if there are any existing problems, because um, we've had for uh, one or two stores uh, already after discussing with uh, Jelle from your team, up front, you could already highlight uh, this and this is not accurate at this point. Please take, take action on that. So up front, you can already do a first check to see if the data will be accurate. And then of course, to do it responsibly, what we did in every store is in the beginning, you let the system do the work, but still there is someone at the door manually counting everywhere. Because um, we, uh, we discussed earlier, I think in the, in the last question, what, how to deal with an offset, how to prevent it. But of course, the first um, step in dealing with an offset is identifying the offset. Uh, and one way is just to check at the end of the day what the virtual visitor count is. I think in the current uh, society we live in, 
that's a pretty pretty big risk to take. So my advice would be uh, the, the rollout, the setup is really easy. But first, of course, uh, we're talking about uh, health and safety. So guarantee that it works and the count is accurate. And then uh, if you take that steps, it's you know, the, the rollout itself is a couple of hours to determine if everything is accurate in your store is, uh, is one or two days doing the manual check. And then you're pretty much, uh, pretty much good to go and you've got, a, you've got a great tool to work with. Okay, yeah, th thanks Frank. And yeah, a very interesting cause. Uh, well, as we said before, it's free in this case for our customers uh, as long as they have the, the, the customer accounting service. Right, as you as you guys from the on have it. So, uh, very curious because you say that it's just a couple of hours. So imagine that if you have your uh, 1,600 stores, well, we can we can deploy definitely this in a very uh, fast period of time, right? Just just to tackle the COVID-19 situation. So let's move ahead to the fourth goal, which is. Um, how long do you expect to have to track managed store occupancy? So first option, from this point moving forward permanently. Second option, temporarily until a true new normal is established. Or the last one, very short term, only while we are mandated to. So uh, what are you guys, Frank, going to do at biggest one? What will be your answer? Um, it's, a, it's a rapidly changing world. And um, at this point, um, at, at least uh, for now, we will until a true new normal is established. But what we also see is that there are uh, some high traffic in a city stores that we have um, that, of course, will also have a maximum amount of visitors allowed, allowed in the store. Like every store in the world has, I guess, you always have a maximum that you are uh, allowed to have in for the very very high traffic stores even if the whole covid situation disappears this will still be a tool that we can use in uh in quite a few stores yeah uh, okay. depending uh per country and per situation but uh there's added value also after this for, for sure yeah Th thanks frank and well the, the, the majority of the the, the attendees 70 percent actually temporarily until a true new normal is established well it, it makes sense uh, and in the end, we have a last question for you, Frank, before letting you go. Uh, and it is, let me elaborate, elaborate a little bit more. So can you say something about any reaction from customers that have any experience with our store occupancy solutions? So any feedback from customers? Uh, what have you heard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've uh, tried that in a, in a bunch of stores where we already have a screen uh, near the entrance of the store where the visitors could see the amount of people at that point in the store and how many places will be left. Um, so there's, there's a couple of benefits uh, for that because um, even in the, the, the busy moments where uh, we will have the occupied solution and someone at the door, it gives the person at the door a lot more credibility because um, normally they would do the count manually on the smartphone and they will be telling people the store is full, you have to wait outside. Um, and th this is of course, uh, people are sometimes getting frustrated with all the measures in every country. This is uh, yeah, putting extra fuel on the fire for people to get into discussion and say, why? I can see plenty of uh, place in your store, let me in. And now when you have a screen, a screen with a red color on it saying, you know, you can't, the store is full. It just gives more credibility to the person standing at the door. So for them, it's a it's a it's a digital backup, you could you could say, and um, it also gives uh, the the customers waiting outside maybe a little more peace of mind because they see the number evolve in. It gives the, it's it's like the signs um, uh, when you are waiting for the for the roller coaster saying uh, this and this many minutes left before you can enter. So it gives them a more uh, estimation of how long it takes to before entering the store. And um, yeah, it just uh, overall makes the whole situation, uh, yeah, with the, the, the crowd management uh, more pleasant and uh, yeah, definitely uh, with less confrontation. So it, 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 yeah, there's benefits, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that makes sense for you. Thanks for sharing because in the end, what we are looking is, of course, for, for everybody's safety and healthy. That's point number one. But, but in the end, we have, uh, we need to offer our customers a profitable customer experience, right? So 
So with this, you are covering both of them. Uh, and we, well, so far, we think Digathlon is, is really doing a great job here. So thank, uh, Frank, thanks you, thank you for, for your answers, for your participation. Um, with this, we will like to thank everybody for participating and answering our polls. If you still have any questions, please feel free to grab them on the Q&A box now. We will answer them in, uh, in just a few moments. First, we want to make a, a quick announcement because maybe some of you don't know, we have our own Lost Provision Academy and it's a free tool. So everybody can just join. So we invite you to sign up and register in, in our website. And here's, here's the link. So please just go for it and, and, and then you're going to get a lot of knowledge of what's happening in the retail and RFID loss prevention industry. Um, so now we move to the questions and answers and let our experts and panelists uh, answer them. So let's see first, maybe a question for Thera. Uh, yeah, okay, so which kind of notifications are possible and um, mail sent, sent to the store manager, SMS to mobile? Um, so for, at the moment from the monitor itself, no uh, notifications are possible. We are looking into the possibility to uh, add notifications as long as the monitor is open. So for example, be closed capacity or open capacity. So for at the moment, no automated notifications are still possible. Um, if there is enough demand, is it something that we can look into? Thank you, Farah. <clears throat> and there was also another question asked, is there an APP available, an API interface? And uh, well, Yele just already answered from, from a technical point of view. Um, so we don't know if you have any more questions. Uh, you can just ask them now. We have one more question. How to make formula shoppers occupancy occupancy in store? Vera, maybe you can elaborate a little more on this. Can you repeat the question one more time, please? Yeah, how to make formula shoppers occupancy in store? Well, this is a, a question by Irsan Munfe. I have a bit of difficulty understanding. Um, let me just. Formula shoppers, how to make formula shoppers. Um, I'm a bit, uh, in, in what do we mean by formula shoppers in this context? Uh, well, maybe we can suggest Irsan to elaborate a little bit more about this question. And is there, well, he's asking as well if there is any standard. Um, yeah, well, we need. We need to elaborate a little bit more about this question, I think, to be able to answer. Um, well, we don't know if there are any more questions. Otherwise, we are going to answer this question uh, one on one with, with Irsan Monte. Mm -hmm. So, guys, if there is no more, yeah, there's one more question from Timotheus Suyabara. Uh, he's asking, does it provide detail for multiple entrances, Vera? Um, in the monitor, we do not provide the detailed information. However, in our analytics platform, it is possible to view detailed customer accounting information. So not, not, not on the screen where you get the, the, the green, the orange, and the red, but in the historical information, in the more detailed information with all the graphs, it is possible to see how much, uh, how many people entered per entrance, so per gate. So that is possible. Okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Fera. So, uh, question answered. Uh, well, I just saw that your son is <laughs> is raising his hand, but I, I, well, if you can elaborate a little bit more. Otherwise, we're just going to answer your question. Uh, with somebody of, of our sales team members. Uh, one more question. So how store management can get a quantity of visitors if it has no access to native app? Um, well, you do need access to the native retail app, but as long as the subscription is active at the store, it is really easy to create an account and only have access to the store itself. 
So it, you do need an account, but it is very easy to set up uh, and to use and can be limited to the store only. Okay, thank you, Vera. Yeah, I think that's all the questions so far. So if anybody has any other question, no, I don't think so. So, well, we just want to thank everybody. Um, thank you, Vera, thank you, Frank, for joining us. This has been very enriching for everybody, for all the retailers, we hope. And with that, we are ending today's webinar. Thanks everybody for joining. We hope you enjoyed it and, and have a great day. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Vera.